Heading to 461 Pennsylvania Avenue. Please make sure your seatbelt is fastened. From the Battery Street Studios of KCBS Radio in San Francisco, I'm Matt Pittman, and this is Bay Current for Monday, October 25th. Good morning. Do you guys know where the media should go? Uh, the big tent right there. The big tent on the left. Great. Thank you. A yeah, self-driving car would have known exactly where to go, right? So in our self-driving car future, there's not going to be such a thing as parking, right? Like, you'll just you'll get in your self-driving car, go home, get out of your self-driving right. car, and then your self-driving car is going to jetson itself over to wherever it parks. In, in theory, in a perfect world. So... But where do you put them all? I guess you put them all in places like this. Yeah. Just when they're not being used. That's my KCBS radio colleague, Matt Bigler. We're in San Francisco's Bayview, and we're on our way to meet up with folks from Waymo. You've seen the Waymo rides, the white Jaguar SUVs fitted with cameras, radar, sensors that look like something from a faraway future. But self-driving vehicles are here, and Waymo has invited us to ride along in one of their autonomous self-driving cars. So we're just about to hop in. I had to get a COVID check. I like that. After we pass our temperature screening, answer the questions, get a wristband, and they have evidently every day different quotes on them, inspirational quotes, kind of fun. Mine says, be your favorite version of yourself. Good. I think I know generally what that version is, but you know, some days it's different, so I'll take it, I'll take it. Yours? Be scared and do it anyway. <laughs> uh, you're about to hop in an autonomous <laughs> Let's vehicle. do this thing. <laughs> Very apropos of the yeah. assignment. Okay. I, I'm not scared. I'm actually very excited. Yeah, I'm but, not scared um, at all. Now, now I'm starting to wonder. Um, no, I'm kidding. Once we got our inspirational slash ominous wristbands, Sandy, the Waymo rep writing with us, pulled up the app and showed us how to hail a ride. We're going to give you all the real Waymo One experience. So we're going to open up the app. And it says Trusted Tester. It's our newly launched program in San Francisco. We're, we're inviting members of the public to come and join us. Anybody can be a trusted tester. It means you can hail a Waymo vehicle to get around before the service goes fully online to the general public. But there's a waiting list, and it's long. But that hasn't slowed down signups at Waymo.com. Once the app assigned us one of the super posh all electric Jaguar I Pace SUVs, just like with Uber or Lyft, it told us which license plate to be on the lookout for. By F3. So we're at, which car are we looking for? Uh, so they all look the same, but ending in 5F3. Found it. It's the white Jaguar, Matt. Yeah. Uh, it says so Waymo on it. Thank goodness, because otherwise I wouldn't know which one. Um. <laughs> and right away I experienced what a tight ship Waymo is running with its scheduling in the app. It was basically a dad moment, not going to lie. Trying to set up a GoPro to capture some video, which, by the way, I did get. And you can watch at kcbsradio.com or the KCBS Radio YouTube page. But my GoPro mount wasn't cooperating, and we missed our scheduled departure, which automatically triggered the system to have a customer support rep check in with us. And is there anything else today that I can assist you with? Out of thin air, the omniscient voice of the customer service rep piped out of the car's speakers. Fantastic. You have a wonderful rest of your day. You too. You too. A little embarrassed at holding up the party, I ditched the GoPro. I don't think that's going to work. If you want to just take it off and hand it back here, that's fine. And at last, it was time to roll. Whenever you're ready, you can hit that big blue button and we will be off. Oh boy. Okay, Matt, you want to flip for it? (laughs) No. Uh, You you do it. All right, here I go. I I trust you. There's There's a screen in front of us on the driver's console and it says start ride. So I'm going to hit the button that says start ride. Heading to 461 Pennsylvania Avenue. Please make sure your seatbelt is fastened. For any questions, press the help button to speak with a rider support agent. I mean, this is crazy, just watching that he has no (laughs) hands on the steering wheel. Yeah. Is it hard to, like, resist that built-in muscle memory to grab the steering wheel? I'm asking Anthony. He's the actual human behind the wheel. No, he's not driving. He's one of Waymo's autonomous specialists. They sit in the driver's seat and can take over manual driving if needed. But again, he's not driving. Comes with experience. Comes with experience? How long have you been driving, or I guess? About three years now. Oh, Oh, three years, wow. Thank you for picking a veteran for us. (laughs) Yes, thank you. 
Yeah, this is kind of a confusing intersection because I remember driving in here. I think right. I was turning off of that road. Yeah, I've seen a crazy amount of changes in the last few years. And, uh, Whoa, and the, the car, car became a lot smarter than it used to be and I was able to... Okay, so right there, the car went did this went way out. Right. Uh, and when it came back into the lane, there was another car that was had to slow down because it wasn't quite sure what we were going to do. So I think I have heard a lot of reports about that, that people who are driving... Whoa, what is happening? Okay. Oh, so that's just the, uh, the teeth monitor. So it sometimes, like, if you look away, it'll notify you it'll back on the road. Oh, um, that's right. So that thing... The driver or the operator? So the autonomous specialist, so Spine it monitors special. their eyes. So for what do you call this? Fatigue, fatigue management. It's fixed on the autonomous specialist, the driver's eyes? Uh, yes. For an SUV fitted with cameras, sensors, radar, and other widgets, gadgets, and tech, the ride inside is pretty much like any other. I expected to hear a lot more beeps and boops and sounds, but it was pretty pared down, and that's by design. Left lane change. Thank you. So what you'll also notice we're here are, again, additional audio cues as we drive, um, basically allowing riders to sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Um, and then if they do notice something like a left turn or something that could feel jarring while you're like on your phone scrolling through Instagram, it will notify you, like, this is what the car is doing. It's playing on the Again, it is, I'm not going to lie, it's pretty strange sitting in the back seat watching a person in the driver's seat <laughs> not use the steering wheel. <laughs> yeah. I think it would be a more of a reminder that we're actually in a really, really high-tech car right now if there wasn't someone sitting there. But for sure. having said that, I'm glad that someone is sitting there. One pretty cool piece of tech the passenger experiences is the display. It's on the back of the center console, between the rear passenger seats. For those control freaks who somehow manage to get into an autonomous driving vehicle, but still need to play backseat driver, this is for you. So yeah, this is kind of like our first stop and go moment. You see all these little... Oh, old, those are the cars. Yeah, those, these little white blocks yeah. are, the, are the cars. And so there's like a long queue ahead of this red light up ahead. Wow. So I, I'm late in the game on this, but... As you look on the screen, you see where you are, obviously, in your car. And all around you are these white rectangles. And those are other vehicles. The car is sensing the other vehicles. For example, there's a FedEx truck that just passed by. And that is indicated by a white rectangle that just went by the car. Yeah. And so you've got a long queue ahead of us uh, at, right before this yeah. red light, which just turned green. I think that's Napoleon. So we'll see how quickly this comes up. But yeah, stop and go. It's just just like uh, normal driving. I haven't even noticed a difference. Now, is this what we're looking at? Is this from LiDAR, radar, both? From LiDAR, radar, and cameras. So and cam oh, okay. use a single coherent picture for the way my driver to help navigate the world. And then, fun fact about the rectangles, um, we use different sized rectangles to represent uh, represent different shaped cars or different sized uh, vehicles. Arriving shortly at your destination, please keep your seatbelt fastened until we reach your destination and remember to take all your belongings. And again, what happens when you pop the seatbelt off, it, it calls customer support? Uh, yes, we'll call into rider support, they'll call in, they'll notify you, hey, why did that? Why are the windshield wipers turning on right now? Um, it could be glare. It could be some smudges on the uh, windshield. Hmm. But it does it all automatically. Oh, you are wow. really observant. I didn't even notice that. I thought maybe he accidentally hit the button. What do you think this thing is? No, I don't know. Looks like Which a fire pit. This, is. this little guy right there. It's like a rotating fire pit on the right. And at 2 o'clock. We're going to roll down our window and see yeah, that. what it looks like in real time. Oh. Oh. That's, the, that's, a, that's a dude. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
You're a circus. Hey, that one, there he is. This is complicated. <laughs> We're going through some very, you know, dicey traffic there. Some cars are turning right, and then we had the second right, and it got through it just fine. After navigating the only real traffic jam we encountered, our roughly 30-minute ride was just about over. I think, knock on wood, within the next uh, less than a minute, Matt, we're going to make it back safely. I think we're going to be all right. Don't, never say never, though. Not up to that bracelet you got. Yeah, really. All right, we're back on the, the Waymo property. All righty. We made it in one piece. So did the vehicle. So well, uh, uh, check. I did break oh, that's part of the right. car, and this this will only be in the podcast. <laughs> there was a piece. One of the child safety guards I yeah. accidentally unhooked, and and technically probably shouldn't have done that. It it kind of reminded me of a of a little kid being like, Dad, what's this? <laughs> yeah. hey, we we had no idea. Yeah, they didn't seem too mad either. I think but we knew exactly where it went. We're so in we're one piece. Hook. We got to where we were destined to go and back and the car did all the driving except for a little bit where they drove around the block so we could shoot some video it's amazing i mean this technology is mind-blowing i mean you look at the car and you realize okay this is something out of science fiction but to be in the passenger seat watching it happen is two things one it's really cool but two it's kind of anticlimactic because it's something we do all the time. Right. We drive cars. It's not that much different. So you quickly get used to it, even though you're watching the steering wheel drive all by itself. Yeah. So it's both cool and anticlimactic. I don't want to even call it a complaint because it's really not, but just, you know, maybe negative observations. It, it kind of breaks really hard. Yes. Um, and I don't know if that's a, a bug that they're going to work out, but, you know, there's zero margin for error when you literally don't have a human operating the thing. Maybe that's part of it. Do you notice that too? Yeah. That, that's a complaint I've heard about from people who've been in self-driving cars is that it feels like you're with a student driver because mm. they jam on the brakes whenever there's something that yeah. might go wrong, burp, you hit the brakes. And I think, that you know, I'm okay with that if that means that A, it's safe, yeah. and B, we're going to be uh, super cautious about whatever could happen. Yeah. We talked to the engineers just now, and they said, they're you know, the algorithms say we're not only observing what's happening we're predicting what's mm -hmm. going to happen what this pedestrian could do what this cyclist could do where that car could go so all that is happening inside the computer brain and if that means you know a little bit of a jolt I'm, I'm, i can live with that and, and again that it's not a big complaint because we had we hit a little bit of what essentially would be stop and go traffic a really long queue of cars uh, waiting for a light to change a red light to change and this is right before we pulled into the main hub here and then stop and go, it was fine. It wasn't like you inched and then, you know, the, broke really hard. It was only when there was an obstacle, like a, a car kind of pulling out in front of you. Uh, cars coming from making a left-hand turn in front of you across, right? That seemed to be the time when it was yeah. uh, maybe just a little more jarring than we're used to with a, a human. Yeah. If that is what happens, that allows me to not drive. Right. And I can, you know, yeah. do other work or watch a movie, whatever. Take a nap. Sure. Let's yeah. fine. I, I'm, I'm willing to be jolted every once in a while. Absolutely. I would totally use one of these. Yeah, absolutely. Felt and, completely safe. And then after a while, it's gonna we're going to be at the point where it's no big deal. Mm -hmm. You know, the car ride shows up like an Uber or a Lyft. You jump in, it takes you to where you're going, yeah. and it's completely forgettable. Yeah. I mean, I think we're almost there. Yeah. I mean, aside from, like, the, the cool bells and whistles, the, the, the nice toys, essentially, I think you're spot on to saying that it's, it's very anticlimactic, just like you would hope a Uber or Lyft ride would be, yeah. right? Just get me from point A to point B, you know, whatever. I think that when... You have nothing to say, you know, negative or positive about your, your, your Uber or Lyft or even a friend who picks you up and gives you a ride somewhere. That means you got there safely all in one piece and uh, objective achieved. Yes. This would have been a horrible day if we got into some kind of a crash. <laughs> <laughs> it would have, would have made the news in a, for a completely different reason. Well, especially because it's a much more expensive car than I drive, I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was fun, Matt. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Matt. Let's do it again sometime. Absolutely. Actually, I wanted to add We have one to more. thank the car. Yeah. Thank you, autonomous vehicle. We had a good time. Uh, see, I don't know his name either. They just call it the driver. I asked him what it oh, really? was. Yeah, they call it the driver. Thank you, driver. Thanks again to my KCBS radio colleague, Matt Bigler, for inviting me to tag along on his Waymo story for radio. Had a blast. And once again, we have video of our ride at kcbsradio.com and the KCBS radio YouTube page. You can also get each episode of the Bay Current podcast on the KCBS Radio YouTube page. 
And if you haven't already, please subscribe to Bay Current on the Odyssey app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen. Join me tomorrow for my one-on-one conversation with Warriors head coach Steve Kerr about the buzz surrounding this year's Warriors team, its 3-0 start to the season, and the coming return of Clay Thompson. That's tomorrow on Bay Current. I'm Matt Pittman. Thanks for listening, and have a great week.